Look at the data. More people on more screens. For more time, using more platforms than ever. It's not slowing down. To be successful, you have to understand all the pieces. Hello, my name is Chris Gummersall, and I've dedicated my entire career to three things. Marketing, technology, and creativity. And there's never been a better time than to be at the intersection of those three things. There is a ton going on in those things, and that's why we created this marketing series. Uh, we have really uh, amazing conversations with intelligent and innovative and inspiring people on a daily basis. We want to capture some of those on video and get them out to anybody who may be interested in looking at them. Um, today, our guest is Christopher Tuff. Uh, who is the Director of Partnerships at 22 Squared, which is an agency in Atlanta and Tampa Bay, um, undergone a pretty amazing transformation over the past three years? Yeah, I mean, it's really been seven. Seven years. Seven years. I was close, you know, three yeah. to seven. Um, but three years, you know, done such great work in those three years that uh, that's what I was counting. Anyway, uh, these guys started out uh, in the traditional sense. They've evolved their agency from you know, TV spots and print ads to now being full-blown, full-service. Uh, with a heavy emphasis on everything, really, media, yeah. technology, creative, um, and some traditional stuff. Yeah. Um, so thank you for joining us. Um, so you know, we can just jump right in. We, okay. I've known Chris for a long time. Uh, we worked at an agency called Moxie together here in Atlanta a long time ago, um, way back when. We were little and, kids. Uh, little kids. Um, and sort of uh, together forged through the, uh, the birth of social and mobile and branded content and connected digital signage and just a ton of stuff and you know I've, I've seen him go uh, way higher trajectory from there uh, since. Um, but we could probably talk here for hours um, but we've really boiled it down to three things of what we, what we thought would be a good topics for today. Um, the first one is about DSPs and programmatic uh, buying. You know, I, I mentioned that Chris's agency does a lot with the buy side, the creative side, you know, the tech side. Um, so let's talk a little bit about programmatic. And obviously, there's been a lot of innovation and really intelligent people creating algorithms to programmatically distribute creative. And uh, there's been a lot of attention on that. Mm -hmm. How about uh, the balance of that and kind of the work you do on a, on a regular basis? And how does that fit into being both a media company and a creative company? Yeah, and I mean, and I, uh, we say it a lot. And, and what we're seeing as a fully integrated shop is that there's so many advantages of having media and creative together. And there's never been mo a more creative time to actually be in media. And if you look at this move to DSPs, so much of DSPs is known for just digital display and banners. And it is about time that we move from that and that the science and the art actually finally catch up. Because the science of DSPs is there, right? Absolutely. But the art is not. And, and, and let's just take the move to mobile. There is nothing worse than that mobile banner ad. And that's the way that DSPs are being served up. So we have this saying as an agency that everything falls under. And it's that brands need to be a welcome intruder. And if you talk about the best thing to understand a welcome intruder is to understand an unwelcome intruder. An unwelcome intruder is the fact that we all hate advertising. You know, and it's, and it's uh, our chief creative officer, John Stapleton, says that he does uh, ad taekwondo. He's like, out, 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 X. You know, when, when his daughter is watching YouTube, she's just constantly going to skip ad, skip ad, skip ad. And that's the world we live in. And if you look at this move to DSPs, so much of that inventory is just display. Now, let's take a, now where it's all going is programmatic everything. And with also kind of our attention spans as individuals growing smaller and smaller, and us being unfortunately distracted to this, all day long, that's at the stoplight, that's in line at Publix, how do we actually hit people with content at the right time that is truly a welcome intruder? The world calls for this massive um, production of content on, on all levels of production. And so many, I think, brands and agencies are gonna be caught behind as they come to this realization. You've got ad blocking happening. You've got all of these things working. You've got people unplugging their cable boxes. You've got all these things working against you. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, one, how do you accommodate for all this content? And two, how do you organize it? Which I think that's where you guys come in. Sure, <laughs> yes. So you mentioned there's never been a more creative time for agencies. Um, how do you take that and roll into the conversation of of your partners out there in the world, whether it be you know buying media on a certain platform, they're offering value add creative back. So you have all not only the people in your internal creative team, but your media team is dealing with all these different platforms that are 
offering all these extra creative add-ons. How do you deal with all of that and coordinating that with your home-based creative team compared to what they're bringing you? Yeah, I mean, I, and I think it goes against everything that agencies have, which is ego. You know, and we have this saying that you've got to be have a big table partnership, and that means it means bringing in the Facebook creatives at the right time. It means bringing in the um, the Buzzfeeds of the world. It means bringing in the client and having them be a part of it, and they're not threats to agencies because the, I think the role of agencies has changed so much to be that of we've got to be the educator, we've got to be the pusher, things are changing way too quickly, brains become way too complacent, um, but we also need to be the ones that are ensuring that we've got the right strategies in place and that every single piece of content is following a very specific role within that, within that kind of spectrum. So. You know, we say that there's never been a more creative time, and there's never been a more exciting time. Because with this move to kind of the welcome intruder side of things, the inventory that we're talking about isn't necessarily standard display. It's video everywhere. And, and you know, you were the one that kind of uh, termed this to me, which I've kind of taken and used it quite a bit. But you've got to blend in to stand out. And, um, you know, you see some of these other shifts that are happening with publishers and brands working cohesively, I think BuzzFeed is a great example of that. So, so how do you wrap with a BuzzFeed going back and forth on a concept? Mm -hmm. You also have CNN. They just launched a new unit, which is almost, you know, you wouldn't necessarily know it was an ad. It's, and, and that's what us as consumers are forcing. You know, that's why we're, we're Xing out, why we're doing ad blocking, because we don't want that crap. We can still tell brand stories in compelling ways, while also being entertaining and, and immersed in that. Absolutely. And kind of when you mention all these different formats, the CNN thing, the mobile stuff, banners, the way the branded content's evolved, that's kind of talking about containers, right? You have all these containers now to fill, whether it be your creative team filling them or your partners filling them. Um, 20 years ago, those containers were a TV box and like a flat piece of paper and a print ad, or maybe a billboard. You had a couple different formats. Now, obviously, you're having to worry with about hundreds thousands of pieces of creative every time you launch a campaign. So, you know, in a, in a world where a lot of people are just taking that same asset and copying and pasting it across and just resizing it, um, obviously the, the agencies that win, I think you guys do a good job of this, is, is not matching luggage, so to yeah. speak. Because before, you know, I, I remember even when I started my career in advertising, it was the term matching luggage was a mandate from the client. Yeah. I need to see that this is matching luggage. It all needs to look the same. Whereas now, uh, obviously, it has to look like it's coming from the same brand, about the same thing, you know, with the same visuals, but you have to take a different spin. So, how do you guys, how do you guys tackle that from a, from an agency point of view, where your clients coming at you and been like, here, you know, make this for all these things, yeah. um, and how do you, how do you work with your clients there? Uh, it's, a, it's simple. It's a hashtag that you put in everything. <laughs> Just kidding. It's not. It's not at all. Please do not do that. Yeah. I mean, and that, nothing drives me more crazy than like just throw a hashtag on it, and, and that's how we create matching luggage. We've got to be moving away from that. Um, the truth is that every piece of content has a different role in pushing you through that kind of what is the marketing funnel, even though the marketing funnel might last now three seconds in certain cases, right? But we are ultimately trying to drive an ROI, and we need to be, each piece needs to be held accountable for where they're playing in that spectrum, right? And what I feel like a lot of brands don't do a great job of right now is using that power of sequential and actually deliberately using these pieces to move them through. And you know, Facebook came up with that great study um, where ultimately, instead of just doing call to action, call to action, call to action, which you get with your kind of standard DSP um, conversion-centric stuff, when you actually start with that brand message and then move them through with storytelling, with somewhat personalized pieces of content to you versus a me. We're very different in terms of targeting me being a father of two young kids and you not having kids at all. The type of content that is going to break through for you versus me is very different. And, and that's, you know, in this whole spectrum, I talk about this spectrum of content, and that spectrum is everything from an endorsement. You know, I just tried out this new sneaker, sneaker brand, and it is unbelievable. And Nike just came out with it. Me saying that, is that's free, right? That's still that spectrum. And then you've got your high-end TV. There's this piece all the way through that is anything from $2,000 to produce to $250,000 to produce that we need to be moving them through. Um, and so that should not be matching luggage because what is moving you through at that middle stage for you versus me is different. 
um, especially with this move to video, everything. Yeah, and, and I imagine it's a challenge for an innovative agency, and I think a lot of agencies probably feel this, they're trying to innovate and do the right thing on each platform. And not only do you have to come up with the creative, but you also have to explain to the client, maybe some clients are a little further behind, maybe they're not ready to innovate, maybe they don't have the budgets allocated the right way to innovate. Um, so that must be a challenge for you, um, you know, maybe not mentioning a client specifically, but kind of what are some wins you've had in that area where you're able to take a client into the room, explain to them the landscape, explain kind of the strategy first, and then develop the creative for it? Yeah, and I mean, I think it's taking them through and understanding that there are kind of three main layers here. You've got your, your, your why, how, and what. Your why is that, that's that public spot that we come out with that, you know, make you cry. Um, the, the what is pretty simple. That's that call to action, buy this now. We know that you're in market for a you know, new Toyota, so we're going to market. And we actually know you're in market for a new SUV, and therefore that's, we're going to hit you with a call to action. It's this middle layer that I think clients need so much help with the education. And how you do it is you're partnering with influencers. You're partnering with companies like Full Screen. You're shooting it yourself. You're doing your own influencer campaigns where you're bringing people in. Uh, you're partnering with some of the publishers, like the BuzzFeeds of the world. It call, the, the new world calls for all of that. And uh, it, it's not slowing down, especially as we move to more of this programmatic TV. I, I mean, it, it still it boggles my mind that people are OK with the TV experience that we have. Mm -hmm. We know it's prime for disruption. And we're finally starting to see those things happen. And unless you're, I, I say it's like building a bicep from nothing like this. So it's like you're, you're, you're flexing it every single day. And, and that's, that's truly what I feel like a lot of these brands and agencies need to be doing right now. Because what's about to hit is going to be even more mind boggling than what we're experiencing. Yeah, absolutely. And all of that in consideration, obviously you guys are getting a lot of data back. So not only are you doing the research I've noticed, um, but you're getting information back. And maybe as a, a kind of as a wrap up, how do you take all that data and research and sort of uh, intelligence that you're getting back from your campaigns and rearm the creative teams with that. It's an, uh, I mean, for so long I feel like the data people would just sit there like this with it. And once again, it's about integration. And the way that we've done it is we're constantly reinventing our, the way our teams are constructed. So whereas even three years ago we wouldn't have a data person on a team, they're actually front and center. So when you guys go live with a campaign, they can tell that creative this is working, this isn't working, and then let's swap it out. Or, or maybe it's you know, doing a A, B, C, D, E test to determine what we should go live with on TV. And, and that stuff is just now starting to happen. And the other side of it is if you think that your content doesn't have an ROI, you're not holding yourself accountable to that, then you're doing a disservice to both your firm and your client. Because we're finally at a place from a technology perspective that we can truly tell what's causing a sale, both mm -hmm. online, but also in retail, um, increasing a, a true ROI, and then also what is that perfect media mix. Um, and, and I think that's where, as an integrated agency, not to throw you know, a, a big call out for us, but that's kind of where our CEO, Richard Ward, started to really push us um, you know, 10, nine years ago when we're finally starting to you know, find that rhythm and cadence together. Yeah, it's impressive. Um, we could probably talk about this for two hours at least, and we have, and we will some more, um, but we'll need to wrap up today to keep the video a little bit on the short side. Awesome. So thank you very much yeah, for thanks. coming and joining us. Everybody that's watching, uh, you can hit Christoph up. Uh, we'll put his, we'll link up his stuff below. Um, please leave comments, stuff you like, stuff you don't like about this series. We're going to continue making these as long as you guys want to watch them. Don't forget to subscribe because we're going to keep putting them out on a regular basis. Thank you for watching and have a good one.